Hello, I know I'm a little muffled, um, but I figured I would uh, start with this. I want to thank uh, the Detroit Grand Prix for allowing me to be Grand Marshal on uh, June 12th at Belle Isle. So, as you can see, I'm pretty excited about that. So, it gives me a chance to go out and see some of our fans who I know will be out there, but then just watch a good race, man, around some good people. So, I'm pretty excited about it. Now I'll open it to questions. Start off with Michael Hara. Yeah, Coach, have you been any sort of a racing fan? And, and... I, d I don't have a story. I wish I did. This will actually be my first race uh, to go to. Uh, that's not true. I've been to a couple. They weren't the Grand Prix, um, but I spent the time on the infield in a uh, fifth-wheel trailer with some friends. Uh, uh, barbecuing and uh, drinking a little beer. So this will be a whole new experience for me. Well, that's the best part of it, trust me. Hey, Coach, uh, you, uh, you're going to end up your OTA period today. What, what do you think you've accomplished in these two weeks? And going forward, what will you take into the mini camp next week? And yeah, I, I think that uh, I think the first week, um, you know, was is really us just there again, getting together and, and being uh, with one another, implementing the system face-to-face, uh, -face, um you know, and even though it was kind of on a walkthrough basis, uh, you know, and then we ramped up just a little bit in a seven on seven, it was more introductory, if you will, uh, ramping them up. And, and this week, as of yesterday, this was our first one of week two. Um, you know, the guys I thought really responded and, and, uh, it was about, you know, l let's make it a little more competitive, you know, let's get the juices flowing and, uh, you know, we put in two seven-on-seven seven periods. Uh, we still are not doing, you know, contact team stuff other than walkthrough. But I, I tell you what, I uh, we were pleased. We were pleased. I thought they really showed up, and and we're uh, we're looking for the same thing today because um, that's, you know, um, that was more what we were looking for. I mean, guys were competitive. They were getting after it, and uh, man, that's how you get good. Good. Thanks. John Macaroon next. Hey, Dan, good morning. I like the helmet look. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks tight. Yep, uh, I, yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, my first one is uh, the NFL came down with a different set of rules for players that, who have been vaccinated and those uh, who have been. Does that present any inherent challenges at this point in time in OTAs? No. I mean, we're, we're there again. Uh, most of the rules that have been in place and now those that have been passed are things that these players are used to. I mean, we did it last year, so it's been no issue at all. Okay, and then uh, now Michael Brockers has arrived. Uh, your early thoughts and expectations with him now being at OTAs. Oh, yeah. Listen, he, he's, you know, look, there's there's a number of reasons why we made the trade that we did for this guy. You know, aside from the fact he's a hell of a player, um, he uh, he just does things right, you know. He, he handles his business. He's a true pro. I mean, he walked right in the door and – you could tell he's been honed in on the zooms and his technique is like spot on. And there again, it's walkthrough for him. And then you see the fundamental work, which is a little more full speed, but he just, he's a pro, you know, he's a vet. He's a pro that understands what it's supposed to look like. And, uh, he's all business. And look, I knew he wasn't going to be here last week. I didn't mention anybody that wasn't going to be here, but that wasn't some like, Oh, I mean, he had things going on and he communicated that to me and, and that's, that was nothing. So we're happy to have him here. And then just one last quick follow-up. Are you willing to share what percentage of the players have been vaccinated? Uh, no. I would say this, though. Every day we get more. Okay, thank you. You bet. Hey, Burkett. That helmet was fantastic, by the way. Is it fit better than a football one? I don't know. It's us, a lot tighter than a football. I don't know if I could play that long in that one for, for three <laughs> hours. But uh, but it was pretty snug. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you guys had uh, Todd Gurley in last week. What's what's the latest with uh, with him there? Yeah, look, we have interest in Todd. We do, and uh, we're we're talking with with he and his agent. And uh, you know, we do. We have interest in him. But I, I would say this: just because we have interest in him, that that does not affect uh, our feeling and our thoughts on on both Swift and Jamal. It does not. Uh, with Todd, is that a situation that would play out here in the coming weeks? Or, you know, some bets just come in the start of training camp. Is that something that maybe waits until the summer? Yeah, no, I think I think if we can do it sooner than later, we'd like to. But, look, we're not, you know, 
It's not right. like we're, we're going to set a deadline on it, if you will, Dave. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. we, we do. We have interest in the guy, but that's kind of where it is right now. All right. Um, one other little housekeeping thing. Terrell Crosby, do you expect him to be here next week for, for mandatory? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, you know, Aaron Glenn said last week that uh, you guys need to make sure you get the, the best out of Tracy Walker all the time. How do you do that? I mean, he's obviously had some really good moments in this league. Maybe last year wasn't his best, and he's talked about different reasons why. But but how do you do that, and what do you think you have in him as a player? I think, uh, look, I think it's already begun. I think Aubrey Pleasant's done a hell of a job with him. And uh, I think just, uh, just the emphasis he puts on uh, er everything that, that Tracy does, you know, every little movement that he makes, every drill where he's out there is just not letting him slip. And understand this about Tracy. This doesn't have to do with, well, Tracy's being lazy. It has nothing to do with that. It's just a focus is all it is. And it's just him training the brain, man. I got to train myself one more time that, man, cut it loose here. You know, just let yourself go and really trust what you're being taught. And he, listen, he's already made vast improvement. He really has. I thought yesterday he really did some good things. You know, there was a number of guys that did really good things. They really are on both sides of the ball. But that that's just a man, him just trusting himself, trusting the process, trust his coach, and, uh, and he'll get there because he is. He's a talented player. And, he, look, he's hungry. He wants to be good. You can tell. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Justin Rogers. Hey, Dan, last week we um... – we talked to Jelani after we talked to you just, um, you know, about the transformation he's made this offseason at the, the request of the coaching staff. And I'm just curious, were, were there any guys on this roster, any other guys that you asked to, to maybe make a, a significant change to, you know, their, their physical makeup to, to better fit what you guys want to do this year? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just know this. We wanted to make sure that our, our backers, man, particularly our inside backers could run and, and we did not want to put an emphasis on size, you know, like how big can you be? That's not what we want. I mean, we, you know, I would rather have somebody that was 220 and could freaking fly at an inside linebacker. Um, that just fits what we're doing. We got the big boys up front. They'll keep people off of you. But, um, and so that was something that we asked him to do, you know. I mean, we, um, look, Sean Payton told me a long time ago, he's like, you know, you go in there and things haven't, you know, been the way everybody wants them to. That's why you're walking into that situation. But don't, you know, there'll be some guys you move on from. But but keep your eyes open. Just because somebody may not have played as good as maybe up to standards doesn't mean they can't play. Give them a chance. And so we're trying to keep an open mind. And I can tell you this, we asked him to shed some weight, and he did that, and he is moving better. You know, now what does that turn into? I don't know. But I know this, I, he's putting the work in, and – uh and I, to me, his movement skills are better than they were last year at this point, or watching him on tape, that is. And then with, with Panay, um, you know, we, we knew he was going to be making the switch to right tackle. Um, you know, he was pretty honest with us last week saying it's, you know, it's a, a bigger challenge than maybe some people might expect. And I think that's, um, you know, one of those things, we, maybe we take that for granted, the, the challenge there. So what do you do to, to facilitate that and, and make sure – um, that the transition goes as, as smoothly and as quickly as possible. Just reps, 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 and more reps. That's that is uh, that's really the best thing that he could possibly have right now. Is just the more that he does it, and the more comfortable he gets in that stance and working on that side and flipping things in his head, the better he'll get. And so, I have all confidence that he'll be able to make that transition. Now, when when does it come? How fast does it come? I don't know, but but. Look, he's there again. He's already making improvement. Now, it's hard. It's real hard right now for the linemen because we're not in pads. We're not in contact. And so, you know, there's things right now. Until he gets a speed ball, a true speed ball from Romeo uh, uh, Quara, then, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, he doesn't quite know yet. But, but he is improving and he's working at it. And it's just reps, man, day after day, one rep at a time. And, and that's the best solution for him right now. Thank you, Dan. Yep. We'll do three more, starting with Chris Burke. Good morning, Dan. Uh, just a Good quick morning. follow up there. Did um, Panay work at all on playing that side this last year? He had off when he was training. Um, you know, did he have any reps he was able to show you on tape? No, nothing like that. I, I know that he had said that just at times he would do some things on his own where he was working his, the right side a little bit, but 
it was primarily left, but I think he did a little bit. But there again, that's not like you're you're uh, practicing it or you're as far as practice against an opponent or or playing, you know, on the right side. So, no, we just we know the type of athlete that he is, and uh, and so we, we we feel pretty confident that you know he'll be able to get this in time. And then just sticking on the offensive line, how important is versatility, positional versatility for you there? Can you have you know, just a tackle only backup, or do you need to have guys that can play multiple spots there? Well, anytime you have guys that can play multiple spots, it, it does help you because it gives you more flexibility on game day, the game day roster. Now, they helped you. They helped us a little bit last year, you know, with, with some of those rules because you were allowed to bring an extra offensive lineman. Um, but anytime you can do that, it helps because, you know, now you, you could possibly bring, you know, you could you could bring another another player that helps you on special teams, or or you get your best combination. You know, I, here's the hard move is, it's like when you when you bring one and he only backs up a guard or a tackle. Now, tackle is much more valuable. Let me say that. But well, sometimes you're forced to have to make two moves to get what you want with one injury. Whereas if you've got a guy who's got plenty of flexibility, well, he, somebody gets hurt, he pops right in at that spot. If he's a guy who can play guard and tackle or, or guard and center. And so, you know, you always want to be able to just make one move, one for one. Something happens, somebody gets hurt, this guy slides in because he's able to play multiple spots. But, you know, certainly you, you're always looking for, for guys that have versatility. Kyle Lanky. Hey, Dan. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Dan. Hey. Um, I, I know that it's not very competitive right now and, uh, you know, no pads or anything, but I'm just curious what you've been able to uh, ascertain with Jared Goff and where he's at right now. Yeah, look, I, I don't want to get I don't want to get too far on this right now, but I'll tell you what, yesterday was it, it was impressive. Um, he made some throws yesterday that were just my gosh, they were outstanding. Um just, I mean, pinpoint accurate throws. You know, he was good on his re. I felt like he met, had one bad throw yesterday, and it was really more he was late on the throw. But uh, I want to say he made about five throws that were just, you know, wow. Okay, that's that's really good. You know, really good. Uh, I, just pinpoint back shoulder guy running up on a wheel, and it's back shoulder right right on the ear. You know, or up the seam or. Uh, out route to Hawkinson, you know, threw it right by the defender where only he could get it. Uh, and he he looks like he – he didn't look that way. He does. He's got a lot of confidence right now, and uh, I think he's getting a good grasp of the offense. And um, it, it was it was impressive. It really was. So, I, I, we're pretty happy right now. And there again, we're only four in and we're not in team. So, but the seven-on-seven seven reps, pretty impressive. Yeah, so I'm curious with, you know, um, since you're not in team and you're not in pads, what, what is the focus with Jared uh, and the offense, I guess, right now? It, is it learning the new playbook? Is it developing chemistry with the receivers? Yeah, I, what, I mean, what, what can you accomplish this time of year? With well, that, look, here, here's, here's, what's, uh, here's what you don't get. You don't get run game stuff, right? And then with that, you don't get run action, uh, the passing game that comes with the hard run action. Um, you know, but but what you do get is you can still get communication and the walkthroughs with your blitz, right? Between he and Frank working uh, pressures, because uh, that's a walkthrough mode. But then you do you get timing with your receivers seven on seven. The other thing you get is you do get the chemistry, right? You get timing, you get chemistry. The guy he can start to you know who can I who can I rely on? Who can do this job for me? What can I ask him to do? How do I want him to run it, you know, inside the system that we're, we're trying to build here, you know, and then just for, for us as coaches, who are the guys we can say, man, when it's, when it comes down to it and we need one, who are the receivers, tight ends, backs we can count on that we, it's, we got to find a way to get them the ball because we can trust them. It's like, if you were going to give up one route and you're going to say, it's either this guy loses, or you got nothing else because you trust that guy. Who are they? That's what we're trying to figure out a little bit right now. So you can kind of get a little bit of that. You can kind of gauge that right now because it is all passing game stuff. So, we, look, we're getting work out of it. We are, you know. So we'll, we'll take what we can get right now. Good stuff. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. All right, last question, Eric Woodyard. Hey, what's up, Dan? I don't know what's going on with my camera, but I'm, I promise I'm here at the facility right now. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for you guys, you talked a lot about, you know, the OTAs, but you, you transitioning and moving forward to the mandatory minicamp coming up. 
what is one thing from your perspective that you'll be paying attention to? Obviously, you're taking out of what you're taking out of this week and last week, but as we're approaching that, what's one big thing from a coaching perspective you'll be looking at? Yeah, that that to me is easy. That is, are guys making the corrections across the board? Or do we still have guys that are making the same mistakes again? You know, that that's that's what I'm looking for. You know, because if if, if you if that's what the focus is, that means we are getting better. And it'll you'll have a better finished product on the offensive and defensive side of the ball and special teams for that matter. So that's what I'm honing in on and I have been. I'm just looking is is this guy making the same mistake or is he learning from that? And uh that that's my that's what I'm looking for. 